Hello there, YouTubers, and welcome to another episode of Dr. Cassette's Workshop. Today we are going to have both a bit of a how-to video, as well as a video about calculating and dimensioning electronic components. Now this is all going to be rather basic, so if you already have some knowledge in electronics, this might be rather boring for you. But if you're new to the whole thing, go ahead and watch this video, because uh, you might be able to learn something. So, here is our problem. We have this nice old receiver that we want to bring back into a like new condition. The problem is that one of the light bulbs just burned out. That can happen because uh, these light bulbs are getting quite old. There it is. This used to be the stereo indicator LED of this receiver. Now the problem that you may run into is that you're not able to get that certain light bulb that you need because it's a special type or you can't read any of the data of the light bulb. This light bulb does not say anything. No information on there whatsoever. Now, you may have heard of people replacing light bulbs with LEDs. And in some certain cases that does make a lot of sense. Now, I would not go and replace light bulbs that are, for example, lighting up the whole dial part of a receiver with LEDs because usually that uh, looks rather crappy afterwards. But basic indicator lights, uh, I don't see any problem in replacing those with an LED. Now, the problem is that you cannot hook up an LED just directly to uh, where the light bulb used to be hooked up because the light bulb usually runs off of much higher voltages. In this case, the light bulb, the stereo indicator light, is getting a whopping 32.5 volts, and the LED takes, well, usually not more than 3 volts. So if you hook that all up directly, you'll end up killing your LED. So what you have to do is you have to get a resistor that you can hook up in between the output on the circuit board and the LED to protect the LED. Now right here I found some uh, nice super bright LEDs that are just perfect for the job. So we're going to use these as an example. This is just a junk circuit board so I can't give you any further data of those LEDs. Now, here goes the part with calculating. Now, this is the schematic that you'll end up with. We have the LED in series with the resistor, and that's all hooked up to the circuit board. This is the voltage we're getting out of the circuit board. I just called it UMPX because the pin on the circuit board is called MPX. This is the voltage that's flowing through the LED, or that can be measured across the LED, actually. And there is the voltage that can be measured across the resistor, ULED and UR. Here is the current that is flowing in the circuit, just marked I LED. And since this is a circuit where everything is hooked up in series, the current is going to be the same everywhere. It's going to be the same right there, and it's going to be the same right there. Now, so we do have our voltage that we're getting out of the circuit board. You can just measure that with your voltmeter. Very simple. UMPX equals 32.5 volts, as I already said. Now, the LED that we have right there on this junk circuit board, of course we don't have any specifications of that. Usually you do get specifications uh, in the way of uh, the voltage that the LED likes to work on, as well as the current that is flowing when the LED is working on that certain voltage. Now what I've done is I've just hooked this, uh, the LED up to an adjustable power supply and adjusted a voltage at which the LED was nice and bright. That voltage came out to be 2.7 volts. And then, without changing the voltage, I went ahead and hooked up my multimeter to uh, measure the current. 
and that turned out to be exactly a 100 milliamps or 0.1 ampere. Now, first of all, you go ahead and uh, calculate the voltage that is uh, measurable across the resistor because you now have both the UMPX and the ULED. And since the voltage that is flowing right there also has to flow right there, it's rather simple. UMPX equals ULED plus UR. And that, of course, gives you that uh, UR is UMPX minus ULED. So do some uh, calculating with the values and you'll end up with 29.8 volts. Now, of course, the values of resistors are given in ohms and not in volts. So then the current comes in. The current, of course, is the current that is flowing through the LED that you, um, at the certain voltage that you want to have. So 100 milliamps or 0.1 amperes. Now you may have heard about Mr. Ohm and the Ohm's law. Voltage equals resistance times current. That is the uh, basic thing that uh, I can remember best because uh, this is actually URI is uh, a name that's uh, quite popular in Swiss. Uh, so um, out of that you can get resistance equals voltage uh, through, I don't know how you say that, uh, current. Do a little bit of calculating and you'll end up with 298 ohms for your resistor right there. So that's it about the calculating. Now unfortunately you probably won't be able to find a resistor with 298 ohms. So this is where the dimensioning begins. Now maybe you own one of these things. This is a handy little device that helps you decoding the color codes of resistors. Now on the back of this thing you'll find a table with tons and tons and tons of values. And these are the values that are actually available for resistors. So you go ahead and have a closer look and you'll find that uh, indeed 298 ohms is not available. But you do have something around there, 270, 300 and 330 ohms. Now, the values that are printed in fat letters are the ones that are most available. They are the most common values. So as you can see we have to basically decide between 270 and 330 ohms. And uh, as you can see basically we're right in the middle of the two values so uh, that's actually a pretty good example. Now you have to remember that your resistor is there to protect the LED. So if it's not big enough, the LED is going to go bang. So, of course, you can only go with a value bigger than 298 ohms. So, in this case, you better go with 330 ohms. Well, that's for the theory. Of course, if you're mostly living from components that are coming out of junked electronics, you'll also have to uh, see what you actually have in your parts bin. Now, I told you that uh, we would go with 330 ohms. Well, it turns out I actually found a 300 ohm resistor, which is actually pretty perfect for uh, what we need. And there you can see it, 300 ohms. Now, uh, the next thing is uh, the last step, and it is an important step. You also have to keep in mind that your resistor is basically, it's like burning a certain amount of uh, voltage, a certain amount of power, so that uh, the remaining power goes into your LED. So, of course, the resistor also has to have a certain wattage. If you go with one of these tiny little resistor thingies, there is a chance that you'll just burn it and uh, maybe cause further damage. 
here is the thing you need. The uh, power equals voltage times current. Once again, a little bit of calculating. And uh, since in this case, the difference between 298 and 300 ohms is, uh, well, is very, very small, we can actually continue to calculate with the values that uh, we have calculated before. If you have changed the value of the resistor, of course, you will have to recalculate uh, the uh, UR value. So here we are, 39.8 volts times 0.1 ampere equals 2.98 watts, and uh, that's round about 3 watts. So that's the value that uh, you need. Now, uh, once again, since uh, <clears throat> since uh, <laughs> I'm living out of a very, very big part spin, I happen to have this resistor, which actually has 300 ohms and 5 watts, so that is extra safe. Now, this resistor right here, the 5 watt resistor, is actually getting a bit warm, so... Uh, that uh, definitely proves that uh, our little bit of uh, calculating down there was necessary. Because, of course, a lower wattage resistor would get even warmer, and that wouldn't be good. Now, as you can see, I already set it up, a bit of a test setup right there, and you can see the LED is working. And uh, it's now receiving a stereo signal, obviously. And if I de-adjust that station, the thing just goes off. So the last part of the whole thing is to install the LED in the space up there and to get everything hooked up properly by soldering all the components together. So, that's it. Hope you've enjoyed this little instructional video and uh, hope it has been useful for you. See you again soon and, uh, well, that's it.